Welcome to the Kill Shot MMA podcast for UFC Vegas 99. It's Michelle Pereira and Anthony Fluffy Hernandez in our main event. I'm Sniper, no monk this week, solo podcast. Do me a favor, smash the like button. We're going to break down all 11 fights on this card going Thursday because we finally have salaries out for the replacement for Brady. He stand is Cameron Smotherman. Had to get all the salaries and orders we could break down those fights with some DraftKings strategy in mind throw out some regular bets as well i think i said it earlier if i didn't hit the like button we're going to dive right in and i'm going to try and not forget to actually go over the kill shot this week by the way if you want i know there's no monk this week we have plenty of other coaches at dfs army breaking down this card in all sports other sports nba is about to start mlb playoffs are going strong NFL season is in is in full uh, swing. If I didn't say that, I'm, I'm a little bit scattered without my man Monk this week. Either way, join us in the DFS Army Discord. Link down below. Sign up. Start crushing DraftKings. Tons of screenshots flying around. Even NHL has been crushing early in the season. Those guys are on fire. That being said, let's start. Let's go uh, bottom up, and we'll start with Robelis Despagne. Taking on Austin Lane. Most expensive fighter on the card is Despagne. He's minus 340 on bet online. The comeback on Lane is plus 265. Your fight ends into the distance prop is massive at minus 1400. Should see a finish here. Despagne finishes people in under a minute. The dude is massive. DraftKings salary, Despagne is 9400. Lane is 6800. Despagne lost last time out. He lost to Waldo Cortez Acosta. I think Waldo Cortez Acosta is a really strong prospect in the heavyweight division. I know heavyweight is thin, but unless you get a well-rounded guy who's borderline top 10, Despagne is a giant problem. Waldo Cortez Acosta was that. Austin Lane is not. The one time Austin Lane tried to wrestle, he looked exhausted. Could not do it and got knocked out by by uh, Johanada Denise in the second round. I think Despagne flatlines him. It's quick. It's violent. Love him for DraftKings. 11 fights in the card. Play him in cash games. Load up in tournaments. This is a strong, strong spot to target. And I'm going to have basically none of Austin Lane. I got a little hot of myself flipping to. I do have uh, UFC stats available to help us out this week uh, without Monk, who's the usual stat guy. When I need it, we might pull it up over there. We may not, uh, but I have the tab available for those of you watching on YouTube. So let me flip over to it. All right, next fight up, we're going to go Melissa Martinez and Alice Ardeline. Martinez is the favorite, minus 123. Ardeline is plus 103. Your fight goes to decision prop is minus 350. There are three women's MMA fights on this card, and this is the best one. And that should tell you something because ugh, this is not a very good fight. This is the three women's fights on this card. It's just the equivalent. I know we throw around hyperbole all the time, but you may, if you told me I had to watch these on a loop for eternity or get, I don't know, 50 root canals in a row, give me the root canals because this is going to be rough. Um, this is the best one of the three to target, mostly because I think I have the strongest lean on the, on the, this fight compared to the other three. I should give out those DraftKings salary, by the way, before I start skipping around. Uh, your salaries for this fight. Melissa Martinez is 8400 Ardeline is 7800 Alice Ardeline is not a fighter. She's an OnlyFans model. That's what she does. That's why she's going to make most of her money. I'm not telling you Melissa Martinez is good, but I think she's more of a legit pro fighter than Alice Ardeline. I think she can get takedowns. We saw uh, Ardeline struggle with that in her last fight. I think it was against Shauna Bannon. I can actually go over to UFC stats. Just what I have available right up. Yeah, she got, no, she got two takedowns. Sorry, she got two takedowns against Shauna Bannon and still lost the fight. I think Melissa Martinez will be able to get takedowns in this fight. Yes, she got finished by Elise Reed. Elise Reed would stomp out Alistair Ardeline if you want a wiki cap here. I just think Martinez is... Spent more time in M MMA gym and is, you know, a better pro prospect. And for that reason, I'm going to lean towards her. It's not a high exposure fight by any means. I will be under on this fight pretty much all the way around, just like the other women's fights on this card. There are better spots to target. 
hopefully next up we can talk about one of those better spots. But we can't. We have to talk about Jessica Panay, whose name is not spelt right here. There are definitely two N's in Panay, unless I'm yeah, I don't I don't know what's happening here, fight odds, but maybe you're just as checked out on this fight as most of us are. Alish uh, Reed is minus 180, Panay is plus 155. Fight goes to decision, minus what 400? Uh, minus 240, a little more. Minus two, still, and I think some value in that. I don't see a finish happening here just because Alish Reed finished Melissa Martinez. Don't don't see that happening. Uh, your DraftKings salary is here. Alish Reed is 8,600. Panay is 7,600. This is probably one of the worst fights to target on the card. Um, Reed should win. Panay is old. There's just not much DFS upside for, for Alish Reed. Um, Panay is better than Melissa Martinez. I think she'll be tougher. They'll stay at, she's got some range. She'll stay at range. Um, overall, though, I don't think Alish Reed is any good. I've gone back and forth in this fight a few times. You know, Alicia Reed lost to Lupe Godinez, couldn't stop a takedown, got got choked out. She beat Jin Yu Frey, but got taken down three times. Jessica Panay was fine back in the day, but you know, she fought on Draj, fought um, you know, on a violence for the title, fought, you know, took down Random Marcos. But this is 2014. This is years and years and it's 10 years ago. Big fall off here. I'm gonna pick the Jessica Panay. Screw it. Because honestly, for DraftKings, because she's six or so she's a thousand bucks cheaper, and it's the only way I would ever consider anybody in this fight I would be Jessica Panay. But overall, it's mostly a stay away. All right, two dumpster fires within the first three podcasts or fights of this podcast. I'm Monk said he had something to do, and I'm all of a sudden really suspicious why he's not here this week. Oh, good, three in a row. Let's, let's get the Dumpster three in a row, man. Golly. All right. Jocelyn Edwards, Tamiris Vidal. Let's just plow through this. Somebody out there, I hope you said that's what she said for me. Edwards is minus 250. Vidal is plus 210. Fight goes to decision prop is minus 325. Two strikers going to stand up. Don't think any are great. Edwards is better. It's awful for DFS. That is really the quick breakdown. I just want to re reiterate what I said the last two fights. Should give you the DraftKings salaries. The problem is Edwards is the one I feel most confident about of those three, and she's the most expensive, I guess, for that reason. She's 8900 Tamiris Vidal is 7300 Not much interest all the way around. I, I, I guess Vidal is live to a finish, but it's MMA, so so is anybody in the cage. Don't like this fight at all. Give me Jocelyn Edwards, though. Uh, unlike the last fight, where I'm willing to get a little bit tricky with taking a shot in Panay, not so much here on Vidal. All right, now let's talk about a hopefully much better fight. The bright side is we covered four fights in under 10 minutes here, so it should be a short podcast. I guess that's what happens when I end up, end up talking to myself for a bit. Brad Katona, John Matsumoto. Matsumoto's minus 220. Here on Bovada, come back on Katona is plus 180. Your fight goes to decision prop. Minus 300. Immediately takes a lot of my interest away in Matsumoto, if I had any, because Matsumoto is 9,000. The comeback on Katona is 7,200 on DraftKings. Okay. Let's use UFC stats here. Let's kind of walk through some of the analysis here because we're going to go from three fights. I'm kind of a sandwich here. Despagne is going to be important. Three fights we just did, not important. This one, I think, is going to be imp important. And I think gets you some salary savings. Hint, hint. All right, last time out, Jean Matsumoto is undefeated, by the way. 15-0-0. He got taken down nine times by Daniel Argueta. Cannot stop a takedown. Got taken down twice in his contender series fight against Casey Tanner. Eventually got a submission here. Fine. But there's a clear hole in his game. Brad Katona, on the other hand, smart fighter, can do it all. Four takedowns, yes, and a loss, but took got four takedowns against Garrett Armfield. Three takedowns against Jesse um, Jesse Butler. He can get takedowns, even in his losses in, in the UFC. Um, he took down Hunter Azure three times. And those guys, I think, have better takedown defense from what I've seen 
than John Matsumoto. Katona's a smart fighter. He's an analytical guy. Is he super exciting? No, but he knows how to win wins fights. He's done it in the UFC. He is uh, trying not make sure I don't include any tough fights. Yeah, he is four and three in the UFC. Got cut in 2019, mostly because he wasn't very exciting, but he lost to, you know, Marab, Marab Duvalishvili, one of them, the champ. Two and one since his return to the UFC, and he's got a guy with a huge hole in his skills that unless Matsumoto has shored that up, I think Katona is going to win that fight. And until I've seen that Matsumoto has shored up that hole, I can't pick him, especially because he wants to strike. And Katona's a tough guy to finish. 9,000, not much interest, especially when, you know, later we're going to, we talk about Despagne already. We're going to talk about Kyler Phillips. We're going to talk about Amabaya, Charles John. Like, it's hard for me to want to play any Jean Matsumoto. Just, especially when I think Katona's still alive. So I'm going to go with Katona. One of my favorites, if not the favorite dog play on the card. Um, one of the two guys I was tossing around for the kill shot. And we will talk about that at the end of the episode. But I am going to go official pick Brad Katona. And regardless, if you don't think he wins, that goes to decision prop. And this price, he's strong, strong cash game consideration. Really strong. All right, let's move on and let's talk about Mateus Nikolaou and Asu Amabayev. Featured prelim, Amabayev minus 200. Nikolaou is plus 170. Fight goes to decision is minus 260. It's because the favorite Amabayev likes to wrestle and does it well. Amabayev, you know, you can see six takedowns against Jose Johnson, nine against CJ Vergara, two against Ode Osborne before he got a submission. Here's the thing. This is a giant step up in Mateus Nicolau. Like, giant. Nicolau was just fighting Brandon Royval and Alex Perez. I get it. He got knocked out on those. The chin is a concern. That is probably my biggest concern in this fight. But he's got wins over um, Manel Cap, Tim Elliott, Matt Schnell. John Moraga back in 2016 is a pretty good win too. Like he's a tough guy to beat. When he loses, he gets caught and knocked out. Dustin Ortiz got him with a head kick. Roy Val finished him with a knee, and Perez got him in in the second round, put him out cold. But Alibayev does not pose that threat. Does not pose that um that threat really. And Mateus Nicolau's got 93% takedown defense. Again. This is a really good test for Amabayev, who is a prospect, uh, a highly touted prospect. Amabayev, by the way, he's 8,700. Nikolau is 7,500. I'm going to go out on the ledge here, and I am going to pick Mateus Nikolau for another upset. I'm going back-to-back dogs here. The chin is super concerning. I will tell you that while I will be underweight on the last pick, um, like I'm picking against uh, the favorite of Matsumoto. I'll be underweight in him in DraftKings. I won't be doing that with Amabayev. I'm going to try and get about field weight because if Amabayev does win, you saw his path to victory. It's a metric fuck ton of takedowns and it's a metric fuck ton of points. And I'm not going to get totally lit up on that. I'll probably go even there and I will try and get over the field on Mateusz Nikolaou because at his price, any win is going to get you right in the optimal lineup conversation. I do. I'm going to side with him here. This is a giant step up for Amabayev instead of Jose Johnson and CJ Vergara. Nikolaou is no joke. Need the chin to hold up, but that is going to be the pick. By the way, we talk about weight, field weight over under. Make sure you get all that stuff at DFS Army. Come join, join us in the Discord website. It's got all the tools linked down below. Come sign up. It's NBA season just about here. Now is a damn good time to do that. All right, let's talk about Darren Elkins and Daniel Pineda. It's a pick'em fight. Right now on Bet Online, Elkins is minus 115. Pineda is minus 105. Fight ends inside the distance. Minus 200 should see a finish here, and it's mid-range. It means we got a good fight to target. When I say mid-range, it is the mid-range fight of the card. Pineda is 8,200. Elkins is 8,000. Great one to target, as I mentioned. I'm going to lean on the Pineda side slightly. There's only so often you can rely on Darren Elkins to take a shit ton of damage, tire somebody out, and get a finish. The weird thing is, 
is that that is kind of if Daniel Pineda did that, it, it, I'd be would not be surprised at all. Uses a lot of energy, goes for takedowns, big movements. Probably going to hurt Darren Elkins. Elkins getting older. Eventually, these finishes are going to start coming. And I think you know they had they they have as of late. Darren Elkins in his last fight, uh, sorry, two fights ago. Uh, I'm thinking four fights. He's had four fights since this Cub this Cub Swanson fight, and it was a, a while ago. Hmm. I guess Darren Elkins' fight just stick stick with you longer. I thought this Cub Swanson fight was like a year and a half ago, but since then he's got a win over Tristan Connolly, T.J. Brown, and Jonathan Pierce. I don't think can finish a wet paper bag in terms of power. He always gets hit a ton. And Daniel Pineda, you know, he's got, you know, this is this is the no contest fight. We take this out. He's lost three of his last four. Had three takedowns against Alex Casares, who's hard to take down. He lands big shots. Is tough, but he slows down. I think that Pineda's going to be able to get Elkins out of there. I just... The takedowns he can get, the power Pineda throws. I, I I can't keep picking Darren Elkins to survive these beatings. Eventually, it's, it's going to turn the other way, and that's what I'm going to rely on here. It is one though. I'm not. That's just this is a coin flip fight. I can see it both ways. I will tell you in GPPs. Go ahead and play both sides. Probably get overweight in both sides. The two mid range fights, which is the main event in this fight, I do like this quite a bit. And on 11 fight card, you have to take those stands because there's three fights at the top of the show. I basically told you, man, these fights fucking suck. So you have to load up on some of the others. I'm happy to load up on this one. It's not one I'm I'm very hesitant on uh, for the reasons I laid out. And I'm going to lean on the Pineda side. I'm also thinking, I think people just like Darren Elkins. I like Darren Elkins. Uh, but I'll pick the uh, Pineda side. Maybe get a little bit of leverage there. Also for cash games, if you're real stuck, I have not done the cash game builds this week. I would prefer Pineda over Elkins just because I would think Pineda is going to win the earlier rounds at least. At least there's a floor there. I wouldn't be super thrilled playing either guy, but if you made me pick one, I would side with Pineda. All right, we're on. Oh, that was the first fight of the main card. We're moving right along here. Um, solo podcast is what it is. Do me a favor. Smash the like button if you didn't already. And if you didn't know, Brady Heastan, Jay, Jay Cadley, canceled. Fights off, he stand pulled out. We already had a salary posted for for Jay Cadley, so he's seventy seven hundred this week. That is locked in and set. He gets a replacement in Cameron Smotherman. Go to the odds. Uh, this is a problem because Hadley is seventy seven hundred, and he's the biggest favorite on the card at minus four fifty. Smotherman plus three fifty. Fight. I don't know if we have all the prop bets yet. Under two and a half rounds is minus one sixty five. So goes to end in a finish will be like minus 180 or so expected to see a finish in this one smotherman's not good look he's gotten win since he's left the ufc or since sorry since he lost the contender series fight i think he's won three straight a couple split decisions in fury he's not good he got put out by uh charlan post gregoru who's not been great in the ufc jake hadley on the other hand look he's a serviceable fighter yes he lost to charles johnson Lost to Cody Durden. Legit guys. Beat Kyle and Lauer in last time out. Finish Malcolm Gordon like you're supposed to. Beat Carlos Condelario. Like Jake Hadley may not be a world leader, but he belongs in the UFC. Cameron Smotherman. Smotherman props stepping up on short notice. I don't think the skill set is there. Minus 450, 7,700. It's just, don't overthink it. In cash games, you must play Cameron Smotherman. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Whoa, don't do that. You must play Jake Hadley. Someone's going to cut that out. I'm going to look stupid as shit. You must play Jake Hadley in cash games. Period. End of story. And in GPPs, 11 fight card. Yeah, you're probably loading up on Jake Hadley. I'm probably going to be, he's probably going to be 60, 70%, maybe more. And I'm going to be, want to be want with that or over the field. If it was 13, 14 fight card. Hey, I look at it. But you got, a fight expected to end inside the distance with a minus 450 favorite priced at 7,700. Just play Jake Hadley and move on about your day. Don't play Cameron Smotherman. Holy shit. All right. Let's talk about Sue Mudarji and Charles Johnson. 
Charles Johnson's the favorite, minus 225. Sumudarji, plus 190. Fight goes to decision, is minus 180. Your DraftKings salaries for this one. Sumudarji is listed at 7,400. Charles Johnson is 8,800. So while I said earlier that I'm not 11 fight card, couple fights I want to cross off right away, the women's fights at the bottom. I was fine playing Pineda and Elkins overweight. This fight I'm going to probably have to get overweight on, and I don't feel near as good about it because basically they're just going to want to strike. Let's, let's pull up UFC stats. You can kind of see, see what we're talking about here. Charles Johnson. You know, knocked out Joshua Van last time out, beat Jake Hadley, but this, tons of decisions, and he's the one defending takedowns. Well, granted, he did take down Azat Maksum uh, a couple times, but for the most part, he's going to want to stand and trade. Sumu Darji, on the other hand, really similar. He's getting taken down by Tim Elliott, match now, one takedown against Andre Sukumta in, in 2019. They're going to want to stand and trade. I think Charles Johnson is better. I think he wins. I got another other dog shots that I'm not really looking at. A ton of Sumu Darji. I'll play some more Charles Johnson than I really want to because of the women's fights and the 11 fights on the card. For the most part, I just think Johnson is the better striker. He's cleaner. Wins over three rounds, and there's not a lot of DraftKings upside potential here. But because of the context of the card, I'll probably have more than I would want to in a normal week. All right, Cole made event time. Rob Font, Kyler Phillips. Kyler Phillips is minus 450. Wow, that really swelled up. That's like Jake Hadley territory. That is keeps going up. Uh, Rob Font is plus 325. Your fight goes to decision prop. Actually, is minus 200 to go to decision. I'm a little surprised there, but we're looking at minus 200. Kyler Phillips, second most expensive fighter on the card at 9,300. Rob Font is 6,900. Um, Rob Font is a great fighter who just can't win fights as of, as of late, and his chin is really hurting him. Let's pull up Rob Font here on UFC Stats. You can see what I'm talking about. He's lost four of his last five. He had this fight against Marlon Vera where he was winning rounds and then getting knocked down at the end of the round and lost. He landed 271 strikes in a fight and lost it because he got was getting knocked down consistently. And then his loss to, to Corey Sanhagen and Davison Figueredo was getting taken down in these fights. I think Rob Font is more lively in the, what the line indicates. I think the line is too wide. I am going to pick Kyler Phillips because he has power, because he can grapple. He can mix it in, uh, and that is what Font has struggled with. I think Kyler will be able to get takedowns, and if they're on the feet, I don't. Font will be the better striker on the feet, but I don't trust his chin to win rounds as we've seen in the past because Phillips can get in these wild brawls, you know, phone booth type of fights, and you probably don't want to be there with Rob Font, but because of Font's chin, it's not, it's not a death sentence. It's not like, you know is going to out-technique you, and he can stay upright to, to finish you off. I don't trust him enough. I will have some of Font in GPPs. Because it's minus 200 to end inside the distance, you could argue Font versus Katona in cash. It's a $300 savings. I lean towards Katona because I'm going to pick him straight out for the win, and I worry about Font's floor because of the knockout potential because we've seen him. Um, you know, when you're getting dropped, you can get finished. Granted, and in the fights where he's grounded on, you know, off his back, not much off his back, not showing the ability to get up, not landing strikes really. If you're on your back, you're not scoring. Uh, even if you don't get finished, I'm going to pick Kyler Phillips. Solid GPP play, I'll tell you. I I prefer Despagne more, and Font is all right, but I prefer Katona. That being said, you can get in Despagne and Phillips um, in lineups when you're going to play. Katona and Nicolau in those lineups. And even the main event we're going to talk about when you take take your shots there. Plus, you got the free square and Jake Hadley at 7,700. It's not too hard to get in two of the bigger favorites. I do like Kyle, Kyler Phillips, but don't count out Rob Font. That line is a little bit too wide. I definitely wouldn't be putting Phillips in any of your parlays. All right. It is main event time. Michelle Pereira taking on Anthony Fluffy Hernandez. Hernandez is the favorite, minus 130. Pereira is the dog at plus 110. Fight ends inside the distance, is minus 700. Load up. Under two and a half rounds is minus 135. You have to love this fight. You have to love it on DraftKings too because Hernandez is 8,300. Pereira is 7,900. 
This is a fun fight. Both these guys throw volume. They put up finishes. Let's look at Anthony Hernandez is on a five fight win streak, including four wins all by all by submission. Um, you know, submitted uh, Rodolfo Vieira, who was gassed out out of his fucking mind, but he still got it done. Nobody else here really a grappler though. Fremd, Barrio, Shabazian, Kabilov. Not a ton of grapplers in there. Doing just fine, doing what he's supposed to do. The win over Jenyon Park and how grappling him, I think, is actually more impressive than uh, some of the other stuff in here. Michelle Pereira, on the other hand, he has won how many in a row? It's the Diego Sanchez DQ loss, by the way. Eight straight. But Tristan Connolly, he was dicking around in that fight, just what he does. Um, hopefully, I think he's gotten over that, although he did a little more against Ihor Poteria and almost got himself disqualified in that fight. Two, you have to worry about the DQ risk with Pereira. It's wild, you have to say that. Three straight first-round finishes, 94% takedown defense. Petrovsky, by the way, is a grappler. Mm, Fialho can grapple. How many? How many? No, Fialho didn't, didn't shoot in that fight at all. Interesting. So, again, not a ton of grapplers on his resume either. So, two guys finish. The problem is for me is that Anthony Hernandez is a specialist, and I don't know if he can take down Michelle Pereira. That's going to be what my pick hinges around. Uh, both guys, super fun, can finish. Pereira is also huge. He's strong. He's got endurance. In endurance. He's unique. If Fluffy can get this fight to the ground, I actually think he's the better. I think he'll have good success with the grappling and submission. It's the take. It's the wrestling to get it there that I question. I think um, Pereira will be able to keep this fight standing up. Regardless, it's an all-in fight. Pereira, you stack it in cash games, hundred uh, percent. GPPs, it's an all-in fight, like a hundred percent. I'll be sixty forty because I favor the Pereira side. But if you want, you like Hernandez, you want to go sixty forty the other way or seventy thirty. Maybe I'll get. A little bit higher on on Pereira depends how these builds go with the fight they don't want to target and the um, the free square and Jake Hadley. It's where the domination station optimizer is going to come in handy at DFS Army. But I am going to uh, lean on the Pereira side for my pick. All right, that's what we did, guys. All eleven fights broken down. Got some DraftKings specials in there as well. Uh, DraftKings breakdowns. We got to go with the kill shot. I'm not going to forget this week. Kill shot. If you are not familiar, first of all, welcome to the podcast. Usually, there's two of us here, but Monk is off this week. Under own play. Expect to win you, or you should should win you a GPP. It can't be main event. It can't be chalk. It's got to be something different. I can't give you what everybody else is saying. Unfortunately, this week I haven't really heard a lot of what other people are saying, and I don't have Monk here. So the two guys I have in consideration would be Mateusz Nikolaou and Brad Katona. I'm going to go what I think is the least popular of the two. I'm going to go with Brad Katona to beat the currently undefeated Jean Matsumoto and hand him his first loss. Katona will be my kill shot. One more time, guys. If you didn't already, do me a favor. Hit the like button. If you're listening on iTunes or anywhere else, if you're not on YouTube, head on over to YouTube. Subscribe to the DFS Army YouTube channel. Check the links in this video. Join us in the DFS Army Discord. Read more notes. Get in on all the winning we have going on there and all your favorite DraftKings and FanDuel and Daily Fantasy contests. Got nothing else for you guys. See you next week. Back to a two-man show. Good luck. See you at the top of the leaderboard.